So you clicked on this video because you want the best settings for Black Ops Cold War on PC, and I am here to help. Are you trying to achieve FPS that looks like this? Well, be sure to stick around till the end of the video to see how it's done. And if this guide helped you out at all, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is optimize your windows. And there's a few things that you need to check for. The first thing is make sure that your power settings are on performance, max performance. So if you type in edit power plan on your windows, if you're not on windows 10, I recommend upgrade and get it done. If you're on windows seven, I understand living in the past is great, but windows 10 offers a lot of optimization for gaming. So go to edit power plan, select high performance. If it's on balanced or power saver, then you're not gonna be using your PC's full performance. I recommend switching this as soon as possible. Believe it or not, most people have theirs on ba uh, like balanced or power saver and their, like their, their system just sucks. They get like zero frames. So I recommend fixing that immediately. Um, and then you wanna go to the processor power management and just ensure that both of these settings are at 100%. And that's usually good for this option. The next thing I, that I recommend is go to your NVIDIA control panel, update the drivers immediately. Like if you're not using NVIDIA, then update your AMD drivers and just get that done because that could solve a lot of issues. Usually NVIDIA releases a game ready driver on their um, GeForce experience, which I know a lot of people don't like GeForce experience. Like if you don't record, and you probably aren't going to use this, but most of the people that are playing, you know, Call of Duty on PC, they want to be able to record their clips and they want to use the filter settings. So definitely update your drivers. There are some times where like drivers are really shit and you'll just have to sort that out. But um, yeah, usually their game ready drivers are good. But then the next thing you want to do is go to right click on the NVIDIA logo and then go to control panel. So once you have control panel open, you're going to go to manage 3D settings and then you're gonna scroll down to where it says the power management mode. It should say perform, uh, prefer maximum performance. This is, so this is essentially, you know, preferring that your GPU works at full load. If it doesn't, then you're wrong. The next thing is vertical sync. We'll get into that later. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we are actually gonna be optimizing both FPS as well as visual fidelity. So we wanna make sure that our recordings or anything, the game looks good, but also plays well. So under hardware, we're actually gonna utilize full screen, even though like if you're a streamer, you use OBS and you've got an RTX card, usually the game will run just as well if it's on windowed full screen. Um, alt tabbing is easier and I just recommend that if you're a streamer. If not, if you're just playing the game and you're just trying to maximize less input lag and utilize, you know, like make sure that your PC is just focusing on the game, use full screen. Um, the next thing is monitor, that's pretty self-explanatory. The refresh rate, like I said, pretty self-explanatory. The next one is gameplay V-Sync. Now what vertical sync does is it essentially lets the GPU and the, uh, the monitor process a little bit more and it causes a little bit of input lag, um, but it makes the picture look better and it removes a lot of the screen tearing. Now, if you do have an Nvidia graphics card and you're having a bunch of issues, I recommend disabling this, but you can actually go to the Nvidia control panel and you can go to where it says vertical sync. Now, usually what it does is it uses the 3D application, um, but I recommend switching this to either fast. Um, and then if there's something that says like adaptive, you can also use that. But if you're having screen tearing issues with the, uh, with the vertical sync off in the game, switch this bad boy to fast. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go back into the game. Menu vSync, you can have this disabled because usually the menu system, if it starts screen tearing with that, then you should probably just buy a 144 hertz display but I understand money's an issue. Um, the next thing is gonna be NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. So this is actually a new thing that came out recently and it essentially reduces system latency, um, allowing your game to respond quicker. So it basically communicates from the game to the GPU and it communicates super, uh, super quickly. Um, I personally recommend normal. Some people use boosted, but Normal is what I've found is the best result. So it, it's just low latency mode is enabled and optimizing system latency. Uh, the boosted is it's enabled and optimizing system latency. Additionally, the GPU clock frequencies are kept high in CPU bound cases. So um, I recommend just keeping it on normal. If you, if you like boosted and it works well for you, then definitely do it. Um, we have the display resolution. So this is whatever uh, monitor resolution you have. Um, if your system is like bogging down to like 1080p, and you're not able to do that, then you can always uh, like bump it down to like 1600 by 900. But I recommend just doing it, whatever your monitor resolution is, try your best to, you know, have the game run on that as well. 
Uh, the next is going to be colorblind modes. I don't actually use these, but if you do have colorblind, if you are colorblind and you have issues with that, or you just like the aesthetic of it, then you can, uh, you can mess with those options. I personally don't do it. And the next is going to be field of view. So FOV is a quite interesting debate, uh, whether or not like people use really high FOV or small FOV. Me personally, I like to keep a middle ground at 105 because I've got boomer eyesight. So I want to be able to actually see around me, but also see the and like the targets that I'm trying to shoot at as well. Um, ADS field of view, I use affected brightness settings. I keep that the same. I've already adjusted that previously. Now the frame rate limit, if you're trying to stream this game and it's giving you, if like your OBS is giving you issues, then I recommend switching this frame rate limit to like 140. So if you're a streamer and your GPU is like maxing out, then switch this to 140 or like even, even like a hundred. And that'll make sure that the NVIDIA encoder and the game will run pretty smoothly. But if you're just trying to maximize performance and frame rate, then you can just use unlimited. Minimize game frame rate limit. So this one, you could just leave at 60. If you want to boost it up even more, you can definitely do that. But 60 is that, that that'll suffice. Now, the next one is quite interesting. Now, if you have a, you know, good machine like I do, and you're a streamer and you're trying to like, you know, record your stuff, uh, if you're a creator, then uh, the texture resolution, you want it to be like as high as possible to make, make the gameplay look good. Now, this does also affect the VRAM. So if you don't have like a lot of VRAM, then definitely adjust this setting. Um, usually like whenever you get to like low to medium, that's what, like medium is, is a good middle ground, but like I recommend keeping it to high, but if you have to go to medium, then that's fine, but just try not to go to low because the game will start to look really muddy and it'll just like kind of look bad. Now for the model quality, I recommend keeping this as high as possible because you want your gun to look crispy. Whenever you're shooting things, you want the gun to look good. Um, but if you have to adjust it, then you can, but it really doesn't affect the VRAM all that much. Like it's kind of variable as you can see right there. Um, HD textures, if you have a 4K monitor and you're trying to like, you know, juice this thing up, you want it to be like super good quality as well as like, you know, the textures relate to that as well, then definitely do that. Um, I recommend installing them just in case, like, you know, who knows, you might be able to get them for, if you, have, if you have a 4K monitor, install them, and then just like juice out the textures like crazy. Uh, 4K interface textures, you really don't need that. I mean, sometimes like with displays that are 4K, the, the, the actual interface being, um, you know, juiced up to 4K is actually good, but it's not really needed because usually, all 1080p interfaces can usually upscale pretty well, but on some TVs or whatever, then they won't. Special effects quality. I personally have this on high. Uh, this is a user option. As you can see, it really doesn't affect the VRAM usage very much, but if it um, if it looks better on your system and you can like see things through the special effects, then definitely do that. I personally use high though. Then we have the screen space reflection. Now this one I personally disable, but it really doesn't affect the VRAM like at all. Like. Um, if it, if your game looks better, keep it on high, but if it doesn't, and you can actually see things better, like it's all about your LOS. If your line of sight is better and you could see the enemies clearer then definitely utilize that option. Object view distance. This is the one that adjusts the distance between, uh, how, how far you can see objects. So, um, I recommend putting this on medium. Obviously if you're, if your system is like really bogging down or like if it's messing up your frame rate or just like your view distance and it's like kind of getting in the way, then definitely switch that to whatever you want. I personally use either medium or high. Um, I use medium pr like primarily though. And then we have the shadow and lighting. So this has got volumetric lighting. I always keep that at medium because I like to have some lighting uh, just because it looks better for like, you know, on gameplays and stuff. It just makes the video look better. Now I personally use ultra, but that's just because I like the shadows to be a little bit more softer rather than like, you know, super sharp, but it will negatively affect your FPS. So I recommend you proceed with caution. If you don't have a GPU that's able to render out the ultra, then I recommend lowering that big time. And then we have the dynamic shadows. I personally turn these off because any extra shadows than like the normal shadows. So like, if you can see right here, it's impossible to turn off the shadow quality. Like you cannot turn off shadows in this game. So you might as well use some of your VRAM and just turn them up as much as possible to make it look better. So dynamic shadows, turn those off. You don't really need them. They're, they're kind of pointless. Special effects shadows, you can have those on or off. It doesn't really affect VRAM at all. It's not gonna affect FPS much. Uh, maybe like a few frames. <laughs> Weapon shadow, um, I personally use enabled just because, you know, if you got gold camo or whatever, you wanna be able to, whatever's on your weapon, you wanna make that look as good as possible. It's not gonna affect frame rate like pretty much at all. Um, ray tracing so if you do have an rtx card 
and you want to test out some ray tracing believe it or not modern or i mean uh black ops cold war is pretty optimized for ray tracing so you can definitely turn these on but you're gonna get a hit with your vram usage so just turn them off just turn them all off the next one is post-processing effects so if you do have an rtx card or like an nvidia card that is capable of using deep learning super sampling this one is called uh dlss i recommend using it i personally utilize the quality but if you've got like if your machine just is chunking like crazy and you just cannot do anything but use the ultra performance then definitely do it it, it does give you some good optimization your frame rates will be super good but as you can see right here they recommend only for ak gameplay um if you use ultra performance odds are like you're like the picture quality it's going to look super muddy and you're not going to be able to see anything in the distance so that's kind of like counter it's counterproductive i personally use quality just because it offers 2k you know resolution so it, it essentially takes the 1080p uh pixel count and then it boosts it up to 2k which makes the quality look better uh, if you don't have dlss then you can actually mess with the render resolution as you can see right here if we disable it then we have access to the render resolution i recommend just doing it at 100 um but if you want to boost that up you can whatever your system quality is and like or whatever your resolution is on your system just have it set to that obviously the lower you go the less um the less like distance you like the less stuff you can see at distance so um i definitely recommend just keeping it at 100 um, because everything just starts to get blurry and muddy as as you go further but i personally use quality uh, for my gameplay and stuff ambient occlusion quality is on ultra this doesn't really affect gameplay like it doesn't affect fps either so i just keep it on ultra it looks good and it's only for objects then we have the motion blur quality this is can you can just keep this on high but just disable motion blur if you're using motion blur in 2020 i don't know what's going on with you dude like i don't know why motion blur is even an option in games nowadays but it is and they continue to put it in in games but i don't know why they're doing it but hey whatever uh the next is order independent transparency now this one does affect vram quite a bit as you can see right there um i personally keep it on medium so just so you can see kind of like the contrast and see the depth of the object that you're looking at it's definitely nice the next one is the vram usage target so this is where you can actually um, allocate specific vram usage for your system so if you have it on default and your your game is hitching and it's not working very well then you're going to want to increase the utilization of your vram um, i personally use 80 percent just because i let the game allocate 80 percent of the vram and then i let the rest go to like the system uh, for the display like my other monitors as well as you know use the over the other overhead for just other stuff that i'm doing this is going to be display gamma keep that on the default srgb and then we have the auto select you can just have it auto select the gpu yeah so those are the primary options that you're going to use for the graphic settings you're going to jump into a game and you're going to take a look at how it looks and if it looks good and it plays well then in theory your fps should be looking super good I'll go ahead and jump into a game and showcase what it looks like on my screen. Yeah, so flying in, we're getting about 110 FPS at our at the lowest end. But I mean, these are some good settings for my PC. Obviously, I've got an RTX card, so your PC will be different. Um, but just already, like this is pretty solid. Like I can get, I've got a good view of everything. Like if I look in the distance, then it's gonna look fine. Like I can see things pretty far away, and with the DLSS on. Um, it's actually doing a deep learning super sampling so like it's essentially dynamic resolution scaling um so with uh with modern warfare they just had a uh they just had a render resolution so it just had a default render resolution that it would scale to but with this it you know it scales kind of automatically so it's, it's pretty it's pretty solid now these are the settings for my pc obviously i've got a really good machine it's got you know an rtx 2080 ti so in terms of FPS, I should not have any issues, but those are my settings. That's what I use. Um, obviously your system is not going to be the same as mine. So don't take all of my settings to heart, but if you have like a mid to high tier system, I recommend these settings that is going to wrap it up with this video. Let me know if it did help you out. If it did, I will make more of these. And if you guys want me to go more in depth with a low performance guide, I will definitely do that on the channel. Thank you guys all once again for watching. This has been Wes. Be sure to like the video. Subscribe if you're new. I've got a series called Road to DM Ultra on the channel. 
so definitely check out these gameplay settings in action on my channel very soon thank you guys once again this has been west and i will see you on the next video